Dusty Springfield, one of the most iconic British singers of the 1960s, wielded a voice that seamlessly bridged soul and pop. Beyond her musical accomplishments, her life was a tapestry of personal challenges and authenticity. Join Facts vs. UK as we present Dusty Springfield Lived a Secret Life with Her Female Lover. Early Life Dusty Springfield, born Mary Isabel Catherine Bernadette O'Brien on April 16, 1939, in West Hampstead, London, was one of the most influential and successful British female singers of the 60s. Her distinctive voice, a blend of soulful emotion and pop sensibility, cemented her as a music icon. Dusty was raised in a comfortable, music-loving household. Her father was a tax consultant, her mother a housewife. But it was the family's record collection that had a profound impact on young Mary. Growing up during the Second World War, Dusty and her older brother, Diane O'Brien, later known as Tom Springfield, were often exposed to a mix of American jazz, folk, and blues music. In her early years, she showed a penchant for music and would often team up with her brother and listen to records and later to perform. Their childhood was filled with impromptu home concerts and a mutual love for song. Her initial foray into the music world was as a member of the folk trio The Lana Sisters in the late 50s, but it wasn't until she teamed up with her brother Tom and their friend Tim Field to form the Springfields in 1960 that she began to garner attention. The group combined folk, pop, and world music, and they achieved notable success in the UK. They even secured a US hit with silver threads and golden needles. It was during this time that Mary adopted the name Dusty Springfield. Career Highlights Dusty Springfield, with her soulful voice and magnetic stage presence, carved out an indelible legacy in the annals of music history. In 1963, following the disbandment of the Springfields, Dusty launched her solo career with the hit single, I Only Want to Be With You. The song was an instant success, charting in both the UK and the US. You Don't Have to Say You Love Me was one of her most iconic songs. This 1966 track became a massive hit and is often regarded as one of the finest pop ballads of the 60s. Released in 1969, the Dusty in Memphis album is frequently hailed as her masterpiece and one of the great albums of all time. It includes the classic track, Son of a Preacher Man, which became one of her signature songs. Dusty collaborated with various artists and songwriters throughout her career, including Burt Bacharach and Hal David, who penned some of her biggest hits. Though she faced career lulls in the 70s and 80s, Dusty made notable comebacks. Her collaboration with the Pet Shop Boys on the song What Have I Done to Deserve This in 1987 brought her back into the limelight, achieving significant chart success. In 1999, she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Additionally, she's been posthumously honored with a Grammy Hall of Fame award for her international hit, Son of a Preacher Man. Beyond her immediate career successes, Dusty's influence can be felt in later generations of artists. Many have cited her as an inspiration, pointing to her unique vocal style, emotive performances, and the depth of her recordings. Dusty's career is a tapestry of hit singles, influential albums, and groundbreaking moments. Romantic Life Dusty Springfield's romantic life has been a subject of much intrigue and speculation over the years, partly because she was a prominent figure in the music industry at a time when discussions about sexuality were less open than they are today. Dusty Springfield's sexuality was a topic she approached with caution publicly, given the conservative times in which she rose to fame. But by the 70s, she had come to admit to having relationships with both men and women. In a 1970 interview with The Evening Standard, she remarked, quote, I know that I'm as perfectly capable of being swayed by a girl as by a boy. This candid acknowledgement was brave, considering that the climate around LGBTQ plus issues was still very much restrained. Throughout her life, Dusty had several relationships, both with men and women. Notable among these was Norma Tanega, an American singer-songwriter, whom Dusty met in the 60s. They lived together for several years, and Tanega even penned some songs for Dusty. After their split, Dusty was romantically linked to several women, including journalist and broadcaster Fanny Waterman and singer Carol Pope. Dusty never married. There were rumors and speculations about her romantic ties to various people over the years, but she kept her private life largely away from the public and the media. Dusty and Norma Dusty Springfield and Norma Tanega's relationship 
stands out as one of the most significant romantic chapters in Dusty's life. Their connection began in the mid-1960s and carried with it the complexities of a public-private dynamic given the Times' societal attitudes towards same-sex relationships. Dusty met Norma during a trip to the U.S. in the 60s. Tanega, an American singer-songwriter, had achieved a hit at the time with her song Walkin' My Cat Named Dog. The two artists, drawn together by mutual artistic admiration and personal chemistry, began a relationship that quickly evolved into a deeper connection. After meeting, Dusty and Norma started living together in the UK. Their relationship wasn't just romantic, it was also creatively collaborative. Norma took on a role in Dusty's management and even penned some songs for her. Their shared home became a testament to their bond, and while they were very discreet about their relationship in public, due to the era's conservative mores, those close to them understood the depth of their connection. Like many relationships, Dusty and Norma's connection faced challenges. After five years, they parted ways. While their romantic relationship ended, they retained a mutual respect for each other's artistic talents. Dusty's career continued to soar in the UK and internationally, and Norma Tenega eventually returned to the US, where she focused on her music and later pursued a career in art and academia. Dusty and Norma's relationship holds significance not only because of the depth of their bond, but also due to the discreet manner in which they navigated it in a less accepting era. LGBTQ plus legacy Dusty's significance in the world of music is undeniable, but her role and influence in the LGBTQ plus community adds another layer to her lasting legacy. While she wasn't an activist in the traditional sense, her life and the manner in which she approached her sexuality had profound implications for the LGBTQ plus movement. The 60s, the period during which Dusty rose to fame, was not particularly welcoming to openly queer individuals. Homosexuality was decriminalized in England only in 1967, and societal attitudes remained largely conservative. Within this environment, Dusty approached her sexuality with a mix of discretion and candor. Her brave admission in the 1970 Evening Standard interview was groundbreaking for its time. While Dusty did not lead pride parades or engage in vocal activism, her quiet resilience in being true to herself sent a powerful message. She demonstrated that it was possible to be genuine about one's sexuality, even in an industry and an era that were not always accepting. To many in the LGBTQ community, Dusty has become a beacon of hope. Her success, combined with her quiet acknowledgement of her sexuality, made her a role model for many queer individuals. Over the decades, her status as a gay icon has only solidified. Her songs have been embraced by the community, and her life story has resonated with many who have faced similar challenges regarding acceptance and self-expression. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite Dusty Springfield song? And did you know she was involved in long-term relationships with women? Let us know in the comments section below.